Hola y bienvenidos. Today we're talking about el subjuntivo, an overview of the Spanish subjunctive mood. First of all, let's put the subjunctive in context of what you already know in Spanish. So far what you've learned is the indicative mood. Um, we're not talking about just another tense here, we're talking about another mood is how it's classified in Spanish. What you've learned so far is the indicative, which is used to express reality, what is, has been, or will be. And it includes all the verb forms that you've previously learned. The present, the preterite, the imperfect, the present progressive, the past perfect, and others that you have learned or will learn are all included in el modo indicativo, or the indicative mood. Now, in contrast to that, there's a whole new side of Spanish verbs that you're starting to learn about now with the subjunctive. And the subjunctive is also a mood, el modo subjuntivo. The subjunctive, in contrast with the indicative, is used to express opinions, desires, and things that are not a reality. It is subjective or conceptual. I have a couple examples of the subjunctive. We don't think about the subjunctive a lot in English, but it does exist. It's, it's, the language is evolving to not include it as much. But a couple examples of how you would see the subjunctive in English is the expression, if I were a rich man. It wouldn't normally be correct to say, I were, in English, but it is correct in this context because that is the subjunctive. Another example, I suggest that you be careful. It wouldn't sound right there to say, I suggest that you are careful. That would change the meaning somewhat. But normally it wouldn't be okay to say, you be, in English, we would say, you are. So those are a couple of of examples of how we do still use the subjunctive mood in English. So let's look at uh, more examples of the subjunctive mood in Spanish. The Spanish subjunctive is often used in sentences with two clauses, two separate parts of the sentences, each one has its own verb, where the subjects of the clauses are different. For example, this sentence if in Spanish would use the subjunctive, I hope that you know the right answer. We have two verbs, hope and know. I hope, the subject is I, that you know the subject is you. They want Juan Antonio to arrive early, same thing. Want is one verb, arrive is another. And two different subjects, they and Juan Antonio. So in these contexts, we would see that the subject is expressing some desire or doubt about another person's actions. And those are a couple uses of the subjunctive, to express desire or doubt. So let's look at the, the conjugations of the subjunctive. And as far as the uses of the subjunctive, you'll be introduced to a couple of them in this lesson, in the lesson in the textbook. And then you will continue, if you continue on with the next Spanish course, you'll continue to learn more uses of the subjunctive. So right now in this lesson, it's kind of an overview, just a brief introduction to the subjunctive, but there will be more instruction about it in the future. So back to the conjugations. The subjunctive conjugations start with the present tense yo form, similar to what you saw when you were learning the command forms. So we conjugate the verb in the yo form. For example, hablo, digo, escribo, juego, conozco, etc. Remove the o and add the appropriate endings. So these stems that are underlined is what you get left with. H-A-B-L, D-I-G, E-S-C-R-I-B, etc. Those become the stems that then you add to, add the conjugations to, or add the endings. So AR verb endings, you'll notice that these are, these take the opposite vowel from what the present tense would, the present indicative would. So E, es, E, hemos, es, en. When we're conjugating the AR verb tomar, it would be tome, tomes, tome, tomemos, toméis, tomen. Now let's look at ER and IR verbs. ER and IR verbs are identical. They're both going to take the endings a, as, a, amos, ais, an. And notice, I forgot to mention this with the AR verbs, but in every verb, the yo and the el, e, usted conjugations are going to be identical. So with beber, yo beba, tú bebas, el, e, usted beba, nosotros bebamos, vosotros bebáis, ellos, e, ustedes beban. Escribir, escriba, escribas, escriba, escribamos, escribáis, escriban. So those are the conjugations. Take the yo form, 
remove the O and add E endings, endings with E to AR verbs and endings with A to ER and IR verbs. There are some irregular verbs in the subjunctive, for example, dar, the forms would be de, des, de, demos, deis, den, estar, the forms start with este, 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 este estemos, etc. Haber, which in the present tense is hay, there is or there are, the subjunctive is haya. Ir, vaya, vayas, vaya, etc. Saber, sepa, sepas, sepa, etc. And ser, sea, seas, sea, etc. So those are the conjugations of the subjunctive. And again, um, this is just a brief introduction. You will learn more about the subjunctive in the future, but be sure to start paying attention to it. You'll notice it in conversations. You'll start to be more aware of it, and uh, you can uh, start trying to use it in at least certain places in your conversation and your writing now in Spanish.